Okay, let me wrap up with three final things. One, sure. the final three things is, could you just quickly mention if you're concerned about acrylamides, which is uh, something that someone said when you have cooked foods or cooked beans and grains or cooked um, bread, I'm not sure what it was, that it creates acrylamides and that could be a health issue. Number two, what do you eat for lunch and dinner? And number three, for people who want to follow up with you, get more information about your programs, how do they stay in touch with you? So first about the acrylamides. Second, what's, what do you have for lunch and dinner? And third, how do we stay in touch with you and follow up and get more uh, information from you? Yeah. Okay. I'm blanking. Um, acrylamide. There's a, yeah. There's a, there's a term. So acrylamide is one type of compound that's part of a larger class of compounds. I'm blanking on the class of compounds, but effectively, yes, you can, you can stimulate acrylamide uh, formation inside of foods. But generally speaking, that happens under two scenarios. Number one, under extremely high temperature or number one, under low moisture um, cooking methods, okay? So if you were to, as an example, uh, put something into the oven and you were to put the broiler on at 500 degrees in a low moisture environment, the chances of you creating acrylamides um, uh, goes up significantly and acrylamides can be pro-carcinogenic. I don't want that, you don't want that. And there's no reason for that to happen. But if you do two things, you can li significantly limit your acryl acrylamide production. Number one, cook in a high moisture environment. So rather than cooking in an oven that's got no uh, moisture inside of it, choose to cook your food on the stove. You can either uh, water saute your food or you can steam your food. And by doing that, you basically are, uh, you, it's a high moisture environment that lowers the acrylamide production rate. And then number two, you can also do it at lower temperature over a longer period of time. So again, rather than sticking in the broiler at 500 degrees for 25 minutes, uh, steam it at a lower temperature and steam it for 40 minutes. And as a result of that, acrylamide production goes down significantly. Okay. So I don't want people to walk away from this thinking, you know, or, or, or for people to say, okay, well, every single time I cook food, I'm, I'm significantly increasing my acrylamide production. That is not a true statement. The, the answer is the way that you cook your food matters. So if you just do it in a low moisture or a high moisture environment and you do it at low temperature, then you're going to be setting yourself up for success. Number two question was what? About what do you eat for lunch and dinner? Oh yeah. What do I eat for lunch and dinner? Okay. I'll tell you my breakfast and lunch and dinner. Okay. I wake up in the morning. Um, I usually eat uh, either two bananas or banana mango, something like that. If it's, if it's mango season, then I'll go for that. Okay. I'll go to the gym. And I will uh, work out for about 45 minutes to 60 minutes. I go to a CrossFit class and I like to pound myself into the ground and work out really hard and have a good time. At the end of that, I usually come home and I will eat um, some type of fruit bowl. Okay. The fruit bowl is usually containing another two or three bananas. Um, I might have um, like a half of one of those big Meridol papayas that you get, you know, from like a Mexican store or from the grocery store. Um, and then in addition to that, I will also put, um, I, I get this like PB2 peanut butter powder, which I really love. I just love the flavor of it. So I'll kind of like sprinkle that on top of that and add a little bit of flavor. At lunchtime, I usually eat one of two different types of meals. My wife will make me a giant smoothie bowl, which I absolutely love eating. So it's a kind of like an acai bowl that's got blended berries inside of it. She puts spinach inside of there as well. And then on top of that, she'll cut more fruit. So by the time noon rolls around, if I'm eating an acai bowl, I've probably already eaten the equivalent of about 15 fruits for the day already. And it's only noon. Um, sometimes I'll eat a savory lunch instead. And the savory lunch usually has a collection of beans and greens inside of it. So it'll be like a bed of, um, a bed of spinach. And then it'll either have chickpeas or black beans on top of that. And sometimes she'll cut up apples inside of there, add it with some, a little bit of nutritional yeast, and then, um, maybe add, uh, some cucumbers on top of that as well. So regardless of how I do it, I go for the savory meal that contains mainly beans, or I go for the sweet meal that contains um, mainly fruits. And then by the time we get to dinner, dinner is usually an opportunity for us to eat um, a wider selection of vegetables. And then we also put into that some whole grains like quinoa or brown rice, um, or we will also add some beans. So the vegetables can be anything from like tomatoes, cucumbers, broccoli, carrots. Um, what do you call it? Cauliflower, um, onions, you know, we'll kind of like mix it up into some type of salad as an example. 
And then in addition to that, we'll have some black beans or some garbanzo beans, maybe some pinto beans. And then in addition to that, we'll either have quinoa or brown rice. And then in addition to that, we'll have some leafy green vegetables. So it's kind of like a salad -y type creation, a little bit lower in its total calorie count, um, but it's got a wide diverse selection of foods inside of there. And then that way I can get my calorie count from all those fruits and or beans earlier in the morning. And then I can make sure that I'm getting a wide selection of non-starchy vegetables by the end of the evening. And then that way I can make sure that I'm getting both the high calorie foods as well as the lower calorie foods and a nice diverse collection of plant-based material in general. Great. And how do we stay in touch with you, follow up? What kind of programs do you offer? Okay, good question. So um, the, the easiest way to uh, follow everything that we do is basically to go to our website, masteringdiabetes.org. Okay. So there you go. On the right now, uh, thank you for pulling diabetes.org here you can learn about a whole bunch of stuff we have uh we have a whole collection of free recipes um we have a blog that contains a significant amount of science that teaches you anything you ever want to know about blood control it's got case studies it's also got tools and tricks on there as well in addition to that if you click on that personalized code at the top on the, in the menu it'll take you to a page where you can speak with a member of our team who will give you an opportunity to 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 learn about who you are and, and what struggles you may be experiencing, whether it's elevated blood glucose or weight gain or any combination thereof. Uh, you can set up a time to meet with somebody on our team and we will try and help you understand uh, what might be the best path for you moving forward. We have a coaching program and we have a collection of coaches that are incredibly smart, that have, uh, sig that have a, um, a significant experience in helping people manage type one diabetes or type 1.5 diabetes, which are both insulin dependent. And we have coaches that help people reverse pre-diabetes, type two diabetes and gestational diabetes. And um, we've got you know plenty of success stories on the website to, to demonstrate exactly how powerful this approach truly can be. So if we can help you out in any way, shape or form, then by all means reach out to us and we'll do whatever we can. Cyrus, I want to thank you and I want to unmute everyone else so we could all really thank you. We really appreciate you coming on and sharing all this information that you've spent your life accumulating. So thank you very much. And if we could unmute everyone so everyone has an opportunity. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Cyrus. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.